Good afternoon, everyone, or midday, everyone. My name's James Gerrish. Uh, I'm the primary contributor to uh, to Market Matters. I'm going to kick off uh, the webinar uh, very, uh, very shortly. Before I do, uh, I just want to run through a quick disclaimer uh, on the screen there. Please note that any advice contained in this um, presentation is general as opposed to personal advice, uh, meaning it doesn't take into consideration anyone's personal circumstances. So please consult an investment professional before taking any of the information uh, on board, it is a. Um, it's been a busy morning uh, this morning. The markets obviously had a, um, a reasonably, reasonably solid move overnight. So um, it's been busy on the desk. I just want to give you a quick background um, of me for those who may be new um, uh, to market matters and who may not have come across us before. As I said, my name's James Gerrish. I uh, am the primary contributor to market matters. I'm the major shareholder. I'm also a senior portfolio manager um, at Shore and Partners, which is a, which is a large um, uh, privately owned um, uh, financial services business uh, here in Australia. I manage wholesale clients, um, large wholesale uh, clients. We have an institutional uh, desk. Um, we have um, split between Shore and Market Matters. Run a team of about ten. Um, professionals in the market. So one of the things that we try and do at Market Matters or I try and do on a daily basis is look at the insight that we're gaining on the desk, on being the desk, on seeing the flow that we get um, during each day and writing about the themes that we're looking at, um, how we're investing our money in the market, the money of our uh, clients and, uh, and wholesale investors that are dealing through us, and, and sort of writing about that on a daily basis. So um, we're a little bit different to um, other services out there. Um, we're at the coalface, uh, as I said, on a daily basis, and uh, I think that gives us an edge in terms of what we, what we write about. Um, a couple of things I want to get across um, in the presentation today. Obviously, we've had a pretty big move in US markets overnight. So um, if I look at the Dow, um, uh, Dow Jones uh, overnight, um, you can see... You can see a major out down about 800 points. It's on the back of a couple of things. So Trump has come out, um, or, and, or Trump's economic advisor has come out and cast a doubt over the deal that he's done around autos and tariffs around autos going into China. Um, and there is some, there was some um, doubt starting to spread around whether or not this actual 90-day truce was actually um, uh, was actually correct. China hadn't independently verified it. Um, at about 11.44 uh, today, um, China's come out and said that they um, uh, are um, confident and that they will um, uh, come to a uh, trade agreement with the US ASAP within a 90-day period. They're saying all the right things. Um, Trump has come out with a tweet, as he, as he often does. It seems like it's put volatility in markets of late. He's come out and said that um, um, China will uh, do a deal. He feels that China will do a deal, um, and and, um, and that is likely to settle down markets. So to give you an idea, the US, the Aussie market has come out and opened um, sharply lower this morning. We opened down um, around 100 points on, on our market. As I'm typing, we've come up, or as I'm speaking, we've come up a little bit from our lows. US futures are rallying. Um, uh, 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 smalls over in the US as I speak. So uh, we don't have trade in the US tonight. So that's going to be, um, it's um, the President Bush's uh, funeral. So trade across US bond markets uh, and equity markets um, are closed tonight. So that's obviously going to keep traders a little bit um, less certain on our market today. I want to run through what I see in terms of the ASX 200, the direction, whether we're still bullish into Christmas, US markets. I'll look at this, um, the other reasoning that some of the, um, it was suggested overnight and I wrote about it um, this morning was about the inversion of bond yields. Um, so that, I think that, that that's a really key um, element to, to get across. And I've, I've penned a bit of a further note on the income report today that we sent out later on this afternoon, just around what actual what it actually means when um, uh, short-term interest rates go above bond uh, long-term uh, interest rates. So, um, you know what that means from an economic standpoint. It's a it's we we hear a lot spoken about what uh, inverse. Um, yield curve means, what a flattening yield curve, etc. So I have written about that in the income report, but I'll touch on it um, in today's um, presentation. I'll look at a couple of stocks that we're looking to target um, into uh, into this weakness that is playing out. So um, the ASX 200 on the screen in front of you trading at 56.36. Um, 
we've been bullish into Christmas, um, and that has been that felt uh, good at the back end of or two days ago. It felt less good uh, this morning. That view hasn't changed. So we had a low in no, the back end of um, November at 55.94. We then rallied up to 57, um, 57, um, uh, 80 on the ASX 200. We're now back down at 56. 36. So we've remained positive on the market given the seasonal influences that typically play out going into into December. I think what's playing out in terms of um, the China-US trade negotiations um, and US interest rates are in an adjustment at this stage. Um, you know, we've, we're, it still seems very likely that a deal will be done between China uh, and the US around um, trade negotiations. There's a lot of reasons why they should be doing a deal, uh, why they need to be doing a deal, um, both from a, in, in terms of what the US um, economy is going through and, and Trump is going through, as well as what the Chinese economy is going through and what they need to do in terms of trade uh, with the US. So um, looking at the technical picture on the ASX 200, we've chopped around this um, between that 55.94 and 50, call it 5,800 for quite some time. Again, the market is being bid up sort of above that 5,600 level. So I think that 5,600 level is providing a good level of support in our market. Our prior, um, uh, when I spoke to you last in, in a webinar a couple of weeks ago, we're targeting a move below 5,600. That played out and the market bounced strongly from there. So for now, we are uh, remaining pretty confident in terms of the uh, SX200 and the market's generally rallying into to Christmas. If I look at um, uh, seasonalities to support um, that view, um, let me get the seasonality chart up. So if we look at seasonality, um, and I spoke about this last webinar, but um, just to give you an idea, and going back 30 years, so this looks at the performance of the ASX 200 um, in specific months of the year. So if you go back and look at the, de the December seasonality, um, it's got an impressive, pretty impressive track record. So in the last 30 years, we've only had five months in December, five Decembers that have been in the red. The rest have been uh, positive. So um, if you think about you know statistics in markets, and that's you know one of the things I often write about is around statistics and probability. Um, then prob the probability or statistics support a Christmas rally going into um, going into to 2018, and that's how we've been positioned. If I think about um, the validity of that, particularly after a weak November, um, markets generally after a weak November have even greater um, um, statistical significance about a Christmas rally. So we were down 2.8% in November, the ASX um, 200, a pretty weak one. We lost about half of it on the last day of the month. Um, but again, that weakness in November supports seasonal strength going in um, to December. Um, if I look at the S um, the S and P five hundred, which is the US market, that's got a, a very similar um, type scenario um, that um, that plays out in December. So um, I just wanted to stress that the Christmas rally does have um, significance there. Um, there is data to support it. So um, if I go and have a look at the S and P five hundred in terms of the chart. You can see that it came back, and this 2700 level is a, is a really um, a key level of support on the S&P 500. It came back and closed right on that 2700 level um, overnight. So we're looking for that level to hold. As I said, that um, US market is closed tonight. So expect a quieter end um, to the week. Just looking at what happened um, overnight and specifically looking at the bond market, because I think you know, this is a really important consideration um, to, to discuss. So I'll just get the 10 year bond yield. 10 year bond yield. So if I if I can't, if you cast your memory back about a month, there was concern and Trump was voicing these concerns about what US interest rates were doing. He was putting pressure on um, on Fed Chair Powell around right, raising interest rates over in the US, suggesting that he was talking the economy up too much, um, that they were going to raise interest rates too far too quickly. Um, since then, US 10-year bond yields have dropped fairly substantially, so bond prices have gone higher. Money has been piling into bonds, and that's put puts pressure on bond yields. So we've gone down from around, from above 3.2% on the 10 year yield, um, down to 2.91% uh, overnight. So that obviously, you know, if you think about bond yields, lower interest rates should be supportive of stocks. 
However, when moves are aggressive, the stock market can get um, a little bit jittery. There's a couple of charts that I'll um, get up now that was um, uh, that came from Bloomberg TV, um, which they can often have some um, uh, some interesting charts. So. If you look at, and I'm going to put this in the um, income report that goes out um, today. So yield curve inversion, what does that actually mean? It means that um, the two year and 10 year yield curve uh, inverts. So it means that the, um, uh, or whatever, t the shorter term um, yields invert against the longer term yield. So whether it's three and 10, three and five, two and 10, etc., the market really focuses on the two year versus the 10 year yield curve. In the last, um, on Monday night, we had the three year versus five year invert. So it means that the five year yield is below that of the three year yield. Ultimately, if you think about um, how an economy works, if an economy is going well, longer you know, interest rates will rise over time. So if I think about economy powering along, interest rates will go higher as that economy uh, improves. Economic growth happens, inflation happens, etc., uh, and interest rates should go higher as a consequence. If the market becomes concerned about future economic activity, future inflation, etc., they start to price in reduced interest rates um, going forward. So um, if I think that the um, um, in five years' time, the economy is going to be in worse shape than it is now. Um, then ultimately, I'll start pricing in interest rate cuts five years out relative to interest rate cuts three years out, and then you get an inverted um, inverted yield curve. Interestingly, um, uh, all recessions have been preceded. Um, there's been an inverted yield curve before each recession, but not all recessions have been uh, have, have followed an inverted yield curve. So it's the, um, I hope you follow that. So what I'm trying to say is that after um, uh, yield curves do invert, we have we 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 have seen recessions, but not not a hundred percent of the time. Typically, though, if we see what a recession and look look um, back into what has transpired leading into that recession, we've had an inverted yield curve. So, the bond markets are really important to keep a handle on. That's where the the bulk of money is. That's where the smart money is, in my mind. So, what the chart shows you on the screen is around um, the two year bond yield. Um, and the 10 year bond yield in white, that is the yield curve um, of the two versus 10 year, you'll see that this yellow line has inverted. So that is the three versus five year um, um, uh, yield curve. So that has inverted. So we're now seeing um, that five year um, bond yields are, are priced lower or yielding less than what the three year bond yield is yielding. So that's an important concept to consider. The other important concept, and you can see it in another Bloomberg chart that I will quickly um, um, bring up, is just around... Is, is around the time between when this actually happens. So it's not... It's not um, it doesn't happen instantly. There is a lag between when um, yield curves invert and when actual stock markets um, um, fall over or bear markets happen um, in stock markets. So yield curve inversions have pre preceded bear markets in stocks. That's why the market's getting a little bit concerned about this. That's why stocks uh, fell over last night. But there is typically a lag and that lag, I'm just trying to find, um, the chart that I've just recently put in the um, income report is around lags around that is. But what it shows you is that there's typically a 12 to 18 month lag between um, when um, yield curves invert and when, uh, when markets fall over. So I think that's a, another important concept um, to consider. Um, so subscribers can view that in the income report that'll be out later on um, today. I think I'll crack on and have a look at some specific stocks. So if you think about, A, the markets have been hit overnight. We remain bullish into Christmas. I think that seasonal statistics or significance still holds true. Um, bond yields have taken a major hit overnight as interest rate expectations have changed. If I go and have a look at um, what the market is expecting in terms of interest rates, I think that's another important aspect to consider. We're still seeing the market 
probability for a 74% hike in December. So interest rates are still expected to go higher in December of this year. But if I look at the probability out into 2019, so calendar year 2019, there are less interest rate hikes priced into the US market now than there previously was. And that's why you see bond yields um, start to tick lower um, as we saw overnight. I want to focus on how we're positioning portfolios because in terms of um, our platinum portfolio, which is our flagship growth orientated um, portfolio, we've recently, um, we've pretty much fully invested. We've gone fully invest, we've, we've gone to that um, state of play into the recent market weakness. And where we've gone, um, uh, where we've gone um, uh, uh, fully invested, the last, I guess, tweak that we've done to the portfolio is buying into some of these higher growth businesses. So, um, you know, that, that, that have been hit fairly hard. So the last three purchases um, we made are actually having a pretty poor session. Uh, today is a collective stance, but they have been strong since we bought them. So we bought three businesses, Zero, um, which is a... Um, uh, which is an, an online accountancy business, a cloud-based accountancy um, package. I use it for my business um, here, and there's a huge number of um, smaller businesses um, and medium-sized enterprises that use Zero as their accountancy um, package in Australia. Um, they're expanding over into the US, and they're expanding overseas as well. So this is a this is a high-growth business trading on a on a, um, a, a very high multiple. Um, but again, it looks good from a technical standpoint for a rally back up to $45. So trading at $39.50 now, I do stress that we've got a shorter term outlook on um, these purchases that we've made in recent times. So, um, and I think that's true. I think one of the things that we've seen in recent times in terms of market volatility has obviously been you know, a big uptick in volatility. The market's had a pretty torrid time through um, October, we've dropped around 13% uh, from the highs down to um, down to a low. We've tried the rally from them, but I think the key takeout is around higher volatility. So if I think about our portfolio going forward, I'm looking for shorter term opportunities in our portfolio as markets um, uh, look to top out. So zero is one of our last purchases um, that we've made. Appen um, uh, was one of our last purchases um, that we made. Again, these stocks have done reasonably well, even in a weak market today. So you can clearly see that into today's weakness, um, there's been uh, appetite to go in and buy some of these um, businesses. So we've bought Appen from lower levels and we're targeting um, a move up above $15. So um, artificial intelligence is a really um, interesting area. I could talk um, for, for, for a lot of time and artificial intelligence and its applications that it can be used uh, going forward. But I think this is a really interesting company. It's scary from a valuation point of view. We've written about that. It's not a long-term play for us. But some of this major weakness that played out in these, these um, uh, growth names, I think were overextended. I often write about um, rubber bands being um, expanded too far. So the market can get positioned um, too bullish in certain directions and too bearish in certain directions. I think that to some degree we've seen the market become um, very bearish uh, on the banks. Um, I'm going to move on to the banks, the resources and some of the major sectors in the ASX just shortly. Um, before I do that, Altium is the, the, the last growth company that we've bought into in recent times. So um, that to me is another high quality growth business. It got sold down pretty aggressively. So um, Altium was trading above $30 odd dollars. It traded down to $20. Um, we didn't buy the lows, but we've bought near enough to the lows and we see higher prices in a business like Altium in the, uh, in the short term. I often use CBA as a proxy for the broader banking space. And um, this has, you know, the, the financials are worth talking about at the moment simply because what's played out um, in US interest rates overnight. So if we have um, uh, banks, banks, just to give you an idea around um, banks like higher interest rates or expectations of higher interest rates going forward, their margins improve. So if interest rates going forward are likely to be lower, and that's what's been playing out in the last few days, is that longer term interest rates are going lower. That's a negative for banks. Banks borrow short and, long le and lend long. So borrow short term and lend long term. So if you think about their borrowing profile, if they're borrowing money at high rates and lending out, 
being exposed to um, lower long-term rates, then that actually puts pressure on margins. If banks, on the other hand, you know, if interest rates, on the other hand, are doing the opposite, so long-term interest rates are rising relative to short-term interest rates, that's going to be a positive for bank margins and bank earnings. So that's why in the market today, we're seeing the financial stocks being hit the heaviest is because of that um, uh, that um, potential yield curve inversion um, that uh, that I just spoke about before um, uh, uh, on the recording and I've written about in the income report today. I also touched on our morning report, to, report this morning. In the morning report, I also wrote about the US financial stock, some of those major ones over in the US and they, they've, they've struggled in recent times. So you know, when, you, when you're investing in Australia, it doesn't, you know, we're not in a bubble. Um, we should be looking at what's happening globally to get, it, to, to, to get insights on what our companies are exposed to here. This morning, we tied together um, a look at some of the global um, financial services companies um, and tied that back into what it means for Macquarie on the ASX. Just CBA, we hold CBA in the um, platinum portfolio as well as the income portfolio. It's trading at 69.50. It's been hit hard in the last couple of days. Um, but again, we're bullish the banking stocks at the moment. We think that elastic band stretched um, too far to the downside. Um, you look at obviously what they're yielding, but you've got to make a, a call more so than on the yield, but on their earnings and how negatively the market is positioned around bank earnings. So, you know, unless we see a major deterioration in the property market, arguably we're seeing, you know, a 9% correction or 9.5% correction from peak to trough in Sydney. But if you look at the longer term stats, it is a small pullback in a in, in a very large bullish phase for, for, for property. So if, you know, the property market doesn't fall apart and I don't expect that it will um, here in Australia, then banks are a reasonable investment. And that's what we're seeing into to weakness today, that there is buying amongst the banks. So we've got CBA, Westpac and uh, NAB in the, uh, the platinum portfolio. We're comfortable with those um, uh, three uh, banks. Um, we've also got um, Suncorp in the um, portfolio. And I have spoken about Suncorp just incidentally um, in recent times. So if I think about lower interest rates, um, so you know, global interest rates um, being lower, then insurance stocks are a really um, important thing to consider here. Interest rate, um, uh, insurance stocks generally underperform when global interest rates are under a little bit of pressure like we're seeing in recent times. So you often see that, um, QB, you often hear that QBE is the way to play higher interest rates over in the US. Not unsurprisingly, QBE is getting hit pretty hard today down 52 cents at $10.85 on the back of that big drop in US um, bond yield. So um, just to wrap up, wrap up the financial space, we remain positive on the banking stocks. Um, I'm not concerned about this recent weakness in the last couple of days. I think banks have high to go um, in the Christmas. Obviously, if the, the Aussie market is gonna rally into Christmas, the banks are such a large influential component of that market, they need to uh, uh, rally uh, along with the market. Um, but I think that will happen um, uh, for a whole host of reasons, but we remain positive on the banks. The insurance stocks we're somewhat cautious on, um, given uh, what we've just seen in interest rates. Um, uh, so I think insurance stocks should be a little bit cautious. We're looking to exit um, our insurance stocks um, in the not too distant future. Suncorp has been a really positive um, stock for us over a number of years. It's been our longest um, uh, uh, stock that we've held in the portfolio. We trimmed the position up around that $16 mark. Um, it was a 12% position in the platinum portfolio. It's now only a 4% position in the platinum portfolio. So we did trim that in the strength. Hindsight would say we should have uh, exited that in its entirety. Um, and that's certainly the case. But now we've got a lower um, you know, we've got a lower lower weighting in that um, stock. We will look to exit it uh, into strength, and our targeting is around that 1450 mark in terms of Suncorp. Hopefully, to exit that into a Christmas rally um, into strength. Resources are, are really um, topical at the moment. If I cast my mind back a couple of months, there was a huge. Um, I actually interviewed uh, Peter O'Connor from uh, Shore and Partners. Um, he's, he's a very well regarded analyst. Um, and a lot of the analysts around the um, place were incredibly bullish on the resources trade. So um, the reason for that was an uptick in global inflation. Um, late cycle resources tend to do pretty well in terms of late cycle investment. Um, 
um, and BHP and Rio were uh, set to launch large capital management programs. One of the, the interesting things here is around when the market is all bullish a particular theme, and I think that was the case back in um, uh, September, um, October of this year when uh, we saw the likes of BHP trading up around 35.50. Um, Rio Tinto was incre incredibly strong as well. The, the bullish um, story around resources were there. The market was positioned for higher prices. Capital management was coming um, onto the table. And I think it's a case where when the market is all positioned one way, when all the good news is known knowns, then you're left with a void of, of natural buyers to push the stock any further. And then we've seen a big unwind of share prices in BHP. We don't own BHP uh, in our portfolio. We do own Rio Tinto. Um, in our portfolio, we prefer Rio Tinto at these levels. We're still in profit on our Rio position, obviously not as much as we were when it was trading up above 80 odd dollars. Our my my feeling around the resources uh, stocks at the moment is we want we we still want to be buyers of weakness, but we we'll, we want to be patient buyers of weakness. So um, I'd, I'd be happy to accumulate um, uh, uh, Rio again below this recent low in price. Um, so that low is 71.35. If you want to be more patient, you wait till below $70. But we've got a position, so we would be more patient. We'd be buyers below $70 if that was to play out. In BHP, I've been writing about a buy around that 29.50 level. That's a that's a level that I spoke about um, for quite some time. It was a level that I spoke about when it was trading above $34, and it's a level we've been um, patiently waiting to achieve. So. Right now, if I look at, um, expand that out into a weekly chart, just to give a bit more um, clarity around you know, where that target um, comes from, it's an ABC corrective target down the 29.29. So around that 29.50 would be happy owners uh, of BHP. But right at this point, we won't chase it. We've got, another, we've got a couple of other um, resource stocks um, across our portfolios. We've got a nickel miner in Western areas. Um, we bought that uh, re into recent lows. Um, so Western areas, WSA is a stock we've got in the platinum portfolio that we like around these these uh, these these levels. So I think the resources plays are interesting here. I think we're going to be, you know, we, we can afford to be a little bit patient in our acquisition of further resource plays. Um, I think in terms of the... Um, the high growth area of the market that I spoke of before, we're looking at those as, as shorter term plays. Then we're picking the eyes out of some of the um, uh, other more interesting um, plays in the market that are that are influenced by um, uh, some of the macro themes that we're, we're, we're writing about on a daily basis. Um, I think it wouldn't be a, a complete conversation without um, talking currencies. So. Um, the currency markets are, are, are incredibly influential in what we see um, uh, across um, uh, across stocks. So, if I think about the U.S. dollar in the in the, in the last um, 12 months, it's been one of our really good calls. Um, without you know, without sounding um, you know um, too presumptive, was around you know the U.S. dollar and what that. Um, how that reads through and how that influences our decisions around stocks and positioning of our portfolios in 2018. So, um, on the screen that you on the screen you can see the US dollar index. This uh, measures the US dollar index against the basket of its major trading um, partners around the world. It's sort of our proxy for the US dollar that we tend to look at and publish in our in, in our daily reports or when we write about currencies and the influence of currencies. So. Um, I've written about the correlations between US dollar um, and different areas of the market, correlations to emerging markets or inverse correlations to emerging markets, inverse correlations um, to resource stocks um, and inverse correlations to gold. So a strengthening US dollar, a high US dollar is a negative for commodities, it's a negative for gold and it's a negative for things like emerging markets, etc. So emerging markets hold a lot of um, debt denominated in US dollars. When the US dollar is strong, um, that obviously has, you know, that makes their debt more expensive, etc. So it provides a negative influence um, in, terms of, um, in terms of emerging markets that um, hold debt in US dollars. So 
right now we've picked the US dollar strength. It's now a very crowded trade. The expectation was US interest rates were going to go higher. That should be very uh, supportive of the US dollar. That's largely played out. I think that I think the market is now too long US dollars, and I think the US dollar is now susceptible to to weakness going forward. Interest rate. Um, if I go back to those interest rate expectations. Um, for the December meeting of the US Federal Reserve. There's a 74% chance that US um, uh, uh, Federal Reserve is going to raise interest rates in December. I think that's, you know, I, I think they probably will raise rates in December. They've guided to it. They've been, they've hung their hat on it for quite a while. If I go back about a month and think about the expectations a month ago, the market was pricing about a 90 odd percent chance they'll raise interest rates. So look, the market has moved slightly away from um, their 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 belief that they will raise rates, but it's a still, you know, it's a, it's a high probability chance they will raise rates. I think still though that the risk is they don't, and I think if they don't, the US dollar will obviously come under a lot of pressure, and that will be supportive of things like commodities. Um, it'll be supportive of things like emerging markets, and it'll be supportive of things um, like uh, gold. If I look at the Aussie dollar spot, the Aussie dollar spots um, on a weekly basis. Let me go to a daily. It's been a pretty volatile day. Um, in terms of the Aussie dollar, this is that this is the trend um, that I had um, that we'd been uh, writing about in the last twelve months or so. Um, the Aussie dollar we'd called from sort of eighty cents down to um, our ultimate target on the Aussie dollar is around sixty five cents in time. Um, in the short term, we we're expecting a, a bounce in the Aussie dollar simply because of that elastic band stretching too um, far to the downside, and it's obviously been borne out by our expectation that the US dollar comes down. If the US dollar comes down, obviously, you know, the, the, the Aussie dollar is um, pretty much a cork in the global currency ocean. So it bounces around based on what other currencies are doing. The Aussie dollar today is at 73 spot 1.1. It's come under a little bit of pressure this morning because we've had weaker than expected GDP data um, out of Australia. But ultimately, I think the risk is the Aussie dollar um, goes up to around that 75 cent mark, 74, 75 cent mark. The US dollar comes under pressure. The correlations are pretty positive with the Australian market and the Aussie dollar. If the Aussie dollar um, rises, generally the Australian market um, tends to rise. So, look, I think that you know, the US dollar is an incredibly important thing to watch out for uh, in markets, uh, and we'll be writing about it uh, and keeping our fingers on the pulse in the uh, the coming um, uh, coming weeks and months over this period as we go into what we think is probably a, a bullish Christmas rally. I know it feels far from it this morning uh, on the market, um, but I think I haven't seen anything in the market that would um, uh, you know that that would move us away from that opinion in. The, in the short term. So US dollar going um, lower in the short term, Aussie dollar going high, not, notwithstanding the weakness today on a weak GDP print. But even now, you've, we've seen a weak GDP print today. You can see from um, what the market's trading at, there's still buying of weakness, buying of the Aussie dollar in, in, into weakness. So um, I think that um, wraps it up. In terms of a portfolio positioning, um, we're looking at growth um, as a shorter term play. We're comfortable with the banks. We're on the sell side of insurance stocks, given what the outlook for US interest rates and global interest rates have, have done in the last little while. Um, and um, and resources plays. We're looking to be adding resources plays into further weakness, but we're remaining patient. So um, I hope you enjoyed the uh, the presentation today. As I said, I, I, I had a fairly busy day on the desk before coming out before uh, before coming over and and doing a presentation like this. So I've uh, been a little bit underprepared today. I hope you um, got some value out of it. As always, subscribers send in questions. We have a, a really good Monday question um, report that um, seems to get a lot of interest. We answer questions from subscribers, um, the good, the bad and the ugly. So that's what we're all about at Market Matters is around transparency and providing real market views, providing real market insights in a timely way. So um, as again, as, as I say, I hope you found it useful and I'll uh, be back talking to you again um, in the not too distant future. Bye for now.